At last. I have come 12,000 miles for this. Jess. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Just thinking. Board has been put in its place and you're back doing what you do best. Just go out there tomorrow and hit him for six. Skipper. I'm sorry, Hedley, you'll be resting. I'm trying a pace attack. How about you ask about it? Why aren't you dressed? Frankly, Douglas, I wasn't sure I'd be playing. Of course you are. Sir Bradman is playing. Just get dressed, please, Gubby. You know I won't bowl to your leg theory field, don't you? Very well. Douglas. Douglas. You've uh, changed the composition of the team. That's right. Without consulting me. Well, there wasn't time to convene a meeting. Besides, it was a straightforward substitution. Well, boy, you're entering this match without a single slow bowler. Do you think that wise? I wouldn't have done it had I not thought it wise. Besides, I had to accommodate for the inclusion of Bradman in the team. This Bradman mania of yours could cost us the advantage we now hold. Sorry. Good morning from Melbourne and welcome to this direct radio broadcast of the first day of the second test. It's a fine day here and I estimate the crowd to be somewhere between 60 and 70,000 for this vital game. Australia won down in the series after England won the first test in Sydney. And the news is that Australia will bat after Woodville won the toss. And all Australians must be asking the question if the England captain Jardine will employ the controversial leg theory field called Bodyline now by the Australian newspapers. We're ready now for the first ball of the second test. It's an orthodox field. We have Lywood running into bowl to Fingleton. He runs up now and bowls, and Fingleton plays the way on the offside, and he and Woodfull are going to scamper through for a single. That ball was pitched up right on the stumps. It wasn't short, and Australia has a run on the ball. And of course, there are high hopes here for the Australian hero, Don Bradman, who'll be batting in this match after missing the first test in Sydney through illness. Sounds like Don won't be in for a while. Think I'll put the kettle on. You stay for a couple, won't you, Carl? Oh, heck, man. This is a great life. I'll have to the rest of these. On the scoreboard, oh, uh, left-hand side, Brian will come in at first wicket down, and Don Bradman is listed to bat at number four for us And now it's Lowood to bowl to Fingleton. It's short, and Fingleton hooks through the leg side field to be a couple here. It's getting out towards the boundary. They come back for a second one, and uh, Fingleton runs on the 17. Oh, 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 oh. Australia no wicket for 27. Australia going well, and this pitch looks easier paced than the one for the first test in Sydney. Now it's back to a new over from Allen. He'll be bowling from the far end to Woodfall, and Woodfall goes back, and he's beaten and bowled. Woodfall is out, and from none for 27, Australia one for 27. <laughs> Thank you. 
Struck again, and he's not very happy out there at all, and nor is the crowd. Bugger off. They gave her a run, surely this looks like suicide. The fieldsman there is Wyatt. The return looks good, O'Brien must be run out. Yes, O'Brien has been run out for 10. Australia now, two wickets down for 67, and the stage here is set for Don Bradman.
to start the off stuff. It was an inviting height. Batman tried to step inside it and hook it away to the lakeside boundary, and it must have hit the inside edge and go back under his stumps. I can't believe it. Don Bradman is out first ball, and I've never seen a scene like this at a cricket match in my life. He is walking off the field, and there's not a single sound. Play another shot like that for a million pounds. It could have happened to anyone. It could have happened to me, Jesse. I've let them all down. And that's the end of England's first innings on this, the last day of 1932. Australia leads England by 59 runs, Australia 228, England 169. We'll be back on Monday for the continuation of this exciting second test. Until then, I wish you all a happy and prosperous New Year. for the new year. I'll try. Yes, you take care. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year, Jess. Ah, what a big stop him. Hey, Happy New Year to you both. Oh, Happy New Year. You've been called for. Inside. They want you to give them a tune in the old game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Bradman, the master with the willow, the maestro of the ivories. Two beers, thanks. Hey, they only serve Australians here, mate. It's on me, Raymond. Thanks very much, Chris. Getting pissed tomorrow if you won't be able to do a round with a revolving door. <laughs> happy New Year. Yeah. Oh, happy New Year. Good shot, Harold. Hi, right. Two more, thanks. Schooners. It's nice to see our chaps enjoying themselves. As long as it doesn't affect their performance. Might help. If I may say so, Douglas, they've been under a lot of pressure. There's been some discontent. What about? The fact that we've contained Bredden? Of course not. But some of the lads feel you could be driving Larwood too hard. Has Larwood complained? No, he hasn't. And he won't, because he's a professional. He knows that he earns his money playing cricket. Yes, but the amateurs don't. Some of them are a little worried about our tactics. Who, oh, Gubby? Well, we all know that Gubby's a friend of Plum. Not just Gubby. There's the Nawab. About time His Highness learned that there is one man who decides tactics, and that is the captain. Any man, Royal Highness or not, who doesn't accept that, is no place in my team. Well, I'm just letting you know what the feelings are. I know, Bob. It's very good of you. I suppose that's what vice captains are for.
Welcome again to the Melbourne Cricket Ground for the third day of play of this, the second test. Australia in a good position here, a commanding position in fact, and they could level the series at one all. In this huge amphitheatre, just a vast sea of faces, and it wouldn't surprise me if this wasn't a world record crowd for a single day of a test match. Despite that unfortunate and quite extraordinary duck by Don Bradman, Australia recovered well through some musty hitting by the Tailanders to make 228. Then England made a good start, but they lost 9 for 61 through the bowling of O'Reilly to the wall. They settled nine batsmen between them. All the batsmen, I think, for Australia must have cross fingers. In fact, all Australian supporters, because can their batting lineup consolidate in this match after their dismal performance in Sydney? In the eyes of the nation, Don Bradman in particular. Not only does he need him to make runs, but he himself must do it important to eradicate the memory of that first innings down. Bowlers are struggling too on this pitch, and Captain Jardine must have regrets about not having the services of a quality spin bowler such as Headley Verity. But we'll we're watching now as Lowood comes in again to bowl to left handed O'Brien. Lowood bowls, O'Brien's beaten, the off stump goes cut out of the ground, and O'Brien is out. Douglas. 
see that His Highness is a conscientious objector. day of high drama in the second test here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground and the important news for Australia is that Don Bradman is not out and he gets more runs here they take two they're coming back for a third run and Bradman's score goes on to 30 and his partner out there is the Australian captain Bill Woodfall. Marwood to bowl to Woodfall. Short, Woodfull hooks, but a great catch there on the short leg. That's Alan who got across, and Woodfull is out for 26. And McCabe has been clean bowled by Alan for a duck. on 32 is facing the bowling of Barwood. He goes back, he's wrapped on the pads, he's right in front. Yes, he's out for late before. Richardson out for 32. Australia 5 for 135, a lead of 194. And the man who can win this match for Australia is Don Bradman, and he's running out of partners with the Australian wickets tumbling. Day and he has the strike now against Bowes. Bradman is 83, getting closer and closer to that elusive century. But can he do it? It's not going to be all that easy. He has only the tail enders to support him, and they're known in cricket as the Rapids. And it's Hammond with his medium paces to bowl to Wall. And he's bowled him! Yes, Wall is out for three, and Australia eight for 184. Howard bowls to Bradman. He's on 96. He'll get runs here. They take a single, he goes to 97, they're coming back yes, to the fine. second run, and Bradman goes on to 98. But why did he take that second run? That was the last ball of the over, he'll lose the strike. Hammond to Baltimore Riley. 
That's an edge and it's gone through to Ames, the keeper, and yes, he's out caught. Australia 9 for 186 and only Ironmonger to come in and Rathen is 98. Thanks, now, brother, let you Daddy, it's your missus. The boy, tell the angle. <laughs> Don't joke about it. Don't even try to hit the ball unless it's absolutely necessary. Just hold out till the end of the over. He'll call you back, love. Don's in trouble now, son. Not dainty, not ferret, huh? Mr. Ironmonger doesn't look much like a ferret to me. That's what they call him. It'll be all right, son. I won't let you down. Well, most bowlers, you see, they can't bat to save their lives. They come in at the end of the innings, they're called rabbits. Now, dainty, they call him a ferret. Because he goes in after the rabbits. Right arm over, three balls to come. Three! Another coat of varnish. Yeah. Mm. Tommy Iron Munger somehow survived that first ball. There are still two balls left in this over from Hammond, and Don Bradman is 98. I can't be to listen. The ball's back with Hammond at the end of his bowling run. Iron Munger crouching over his bat. A hush silence here round the ground. Hammond starts to move in. Comes up and he bowls, and it's through to the keeper. It was short, no stroke offered by Ironmonger. One ball left in the over. Jardin brings in the field. You're a little easy, aren't you, old fellow? One ball left in this dramatic over. Not a sound around this ground. Hammond to Ironmonger. It's off the bat, it's in the air, Jardine dives. It was a catch, but he's dropped and he couldn't take it. And Don Bradman has a chance to reach that hundred. Well played, Dainty! It's the end of the over. It's all Australia right, Ironmongers survived. They lead now by 245, but the important thing is that Don Bradman has the strike and a chance to make that hundred yeah, Don's after got his, his first ball duck in the first innings. Bowl them short, dig them in, bowl them wide. Anything so we can't get any runs. We'll get Ironmonger down this end. Very good, Skipper. Bradman crouched down over his bat, the bowler is first. Jardine taking a long time to place his field. He's pulled round the onside, there'll be runs here, he sets off for the first one, that takes him to 99. They're coming back now for the second, a chase there for Larwood, who's limping. Uh, they come back for the second one, that's Bradman's 100, he wants a third. Larwood has it just inside the fence, they're going for the third run. The return comes back, and Bradman will get home, it comes back to the bowler's end, and Bradman dives. I think he's safe, and Don Bradman has reached his century. Australia 9 for 189, one of the greatest centuries ever seen on this ground. Just 
listen to this. That's it. England all out for 139. And that ties the Test Series at one all. Australia has won the second Test by 111 runs. And just listen to that mighty reception out there for the local team here at the Melbourne Ground. What a proud, proud day for Australia. Are you coming to congratulate the Australians? If you'll permit me one small observation. All right, I miscalculated. But the wicket was doctored. What are you saying? That the curator would deliberately go out that there? That wicket was deliberately underprepared. Whether the curator acted under instructions or not, I cannot say. I fear you are making excuses for your own errors of judgment. I warned you against acting rashly. And I told you that I shall be making the tactical decisions on this tour. Your obsession with Bradman has clouded all your decision making, and that is the reason we have lost this test. I shall not allow that situation to repeat itself in Adelaide. Excuse me, Mr. Jardine. Yes, what is it? Well, I've just discovered I'm to play in social match at weekend. Yes, it'll be the 12th man. Aye, well, I thought I might have a bit of time off before Adelaide. What were you planning to do? Well, I was simply just open to rest my feet. I had to leave the field four times in second test. Yes, I'm well aware of it. You spent an hour away from the game, all told. Aye, but I still bowled more overs than anyone else. You would have bowled a lot more if you hadn't been off the field so often. I couldn't help it. My boots kept splitting. I bowled as hard as I could. No, you didn't. None of you did. That's why Bradman scored his century and the Australians won the test. Volks and Bowes aren't in this social team, though. Harold, listen to me. You are my principal weapon, the spearhead of my attack. Not Volks and Bowes. I want you fit for Adelaide. Fitter, faster and meaner than you've ever been. So I'm to be 12th man, then? No. No, you can play. And I expect to see you at the practice nets tomorrow. Aye. Right. Man. Start, Raymond, man. Oh, you just realised that. Aye, he thinks he owns his body and soul. You are being paid, Harold. Yeah, but not very bloody much. Not man in public. Aye, don't warrant treatment like this. Anyway, the amateurs are fed up with them, so I'd better watch out, Natalie. Can't stop. I'll stay here. I'll have one. Oh! <laughs> 
On. It's only practice, you know. <laughs> I want this rebel excluded from all further practice. What? But the, the public is always... I did not come all this way to provide free entertainment for the masses. I do not want them here after luncheon. Come on now, come on, help this guy. Come on, hey, what's all this? No spectators allowed. Says who? Orders of the cricket board and sardine. Go to buggery. We'll see about this. I can go anywhere on the press. Yeah, I know. Now look, James. Uh, hang on, he's, uh, he's all right. He's me photographer. Who's that, your assistant? Never seen him before in my life. Stay. All right, but don't you cause any trouble, Jonesy. I'm sorry. Sorry, sir. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Douglas, there are some members of the press outside who want a statement. Practice is for the players. Not for the public. I certainly don't wish to speak to the press about it. My dear chap, we cannot afford to risk any further bad blood. We have already come under attack for our tactics on the field. I shall settle that matter once and for all. Show them in. Everything we have done has been well within the laws of cricket. We have placed a more difficult field than is ordinarily employed with fast bowling and have been successful in curbing the activities of the batsmen. But I can assure you that there is nothing new in the stratagem, nor any graver danger than in any other. Bull. It has been successful so far, and Mr. Warner and I hope that it will go on being successful. Is that right, Mr. Warner? You support the tactics of Mr. Jardine, and in particular this body line bowling? Uh, well, um... As Mr. Jardine says, it is a, a legitimate form of leg theory. Ah, would this be the same leg theory that you derided in the Morning Post of August 22nd, 1932? And I quote, These tactics should be deplored. With five men on the leg side, the balls were short pitched and frequently bounced head high and more. If all fast bowlers were to adopt these methods, there would be trouble and plenty of it. This is not bowling. Indeed, it is not even cricket. Now, in light of that article, Mr. Warner, would you say that you describe the current English attack to be cricket? Well, the uh, circumstances were entirely different in London, and... Uh, oh, how different? Well, um, if you'd researched a little further, Mr. Cooper, you would have discovered that I was playing in that match, and I faced that leg theory field. The circumstances then, as Mr. Warner correctly points out, were completely different. Oh, would you care to define the difference, Mr. Jardine? No, I would not. Summers and the people of Adelaide, I welcome you all, and we hope that your stay in our fair city will be indeed a happy one. Yes.
A little cooler out here. It's a little quieter anyway. The sun would be just now setting at my home in India. It truly never sets upon the British Empire. You are very much the Empire man, aren't you, Douglas? Ah, it's what makes we British the greatest race on earth. We must all have the courage of our convictions. And do what we think best. But we must play the game by the rules too. By the rules, yes but also to win. Winning is everything to you, isn't it? No, Patty. But I see no honor in defeat. What do you want of me, Douglas? Simply your support on the field. The field of honor? I cannot play your way, Douglas. I'm your captain. Surely you'll agree to abide by my decisions. If I can't? Then I should prefer it if you didn't play at all. Then, that is how it must be. I cannot play your way, Douglas, my friend. You will never play test cricket again. Then I bid you good night.